Hey guys, Charles of Premium B, and in this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at creating what I call the Cheshire Cat Effect, which causes a person's eyes and smile to linger on screen during a fade out. This will give them an ominous look, and you can use it in a lot of creative ways, being subtle or very extreme. I'll walk you guys through how we can do this pretty painlessly using the Roto Brush tool in After Effects. And we'll take a look at a few other tricks we can do with this as well. So if this looks cool to you guys, let's go ahead and get started. All right guys, we're inside of After Effects and I've got a shot here from Shutterstock that we're gonna use to create the Cheshire Cat effect with. You can see it's this girl looking from behind this tree. Now to do this, we are gonna need to essentially separate the eyes, so isolate those so you could roto them by hand, or in our case, we're gonna use the Roto Brush, the new Roto Brush 2, it's in After Effects. So we need the eyes to be on their own layer, so I'm gonna select my footage down here, I'm gonna do Control D to duplicate it, Command D if you're on a Mac. And I'm gonna go ahead and name this Eyes just so we can see that. And if we wanna change the color here, we can do that as well. I might turn this to be a red color. So now in order for us to use the Roto Brush, I actually need to double click on our eyes layer. So I'll double click and that goes into the layer view. And then we can come up here and you'll see the little paintbrush over the guy here. I'm gonna select that and that is the Roto Brush tool. And I'm gonna use a very small size brush, but you can adjust the size of the brush. Just hold control or command on a Mac and then click and drag. You can see it's gonna show the size of the brush there. So I want this to be very, very small. I'm just gonna use it to outline around her eyes. Another thing you can do is open up the brush panel over here if you want some other options on it and you'll get to that through window, you'll see brushes and you can adjust your brush size there as well. So what I wanna do here is set the current time indicator here at the very beginning of my shot. So you can see because my current time indicator here, you can actually move it over, it was in the middle. We want it to be at the very beginning or conversely you could do it at the very end. I usually like starting at either the beginning or the end. So I'm gonna zoom in here on her eyes and I'm just gonna outline both of her eyes so I'm gonna go ahead and just click and drag around the inside of the eye right there. Cause really what we wanna isolate is kind of the white areas of the eyes. Now this has done a pretty good job kind of selecting around it. And you can see here, it's a little bit rough around the edges and this will kind of smooth out. The main thing that concerns me is kind of her lower eyelid here, which is a little bit brighter. The darker areas like the dark eyelash and the eye and everything else, I'm not too concerned about because we're actually gonna use a track mat a little bit later on to kind of isolate those as well. So any dark areas that might accidentally get grabbed by the roto here, I'm not as concerned about. However, I do wanna smooth this out and make it look as smooth as possible just before we actually kind of run the roto brush process. If you hold Alt or Option on a Mac, you'll see we get the red uh, indicator here and that's gonna allow us to kind of mark out these areas that we don't want to be masked out. So again, right around that lower eyelid there is kind of my main concern. This is a little bit of a concern too, but not as much. And I think that looks pretty good. At least it's a very good starting point. I may adjust this a little bit more here. Now let's go ahead and go over to the other eyeball and just gonna trace around that as well. And you can see pretty good job. I'm gonna hold Alt and kind of uh, adjust around this a little bit. I'm gonna zoom out here. I think this looks pretty good, at least for my trials that I've tried with this shot. Again, we're getting a lot of the dark eyelash right here, but I'm not as concerned about that. Again, we'll see that a little bit later on. So what we can do here with the current time indicator on this current frame, I think this is called the base frame when you kind of draw this in with the Roto Brush tool. I'm gonna to come over here actually, we'll see the effect applied over here too. One thing I always, almost always forget to do is change this quality here from standard to best. Not sure why that's not the default, that would help quite a bit. But go ahead and change that. And there's a couple of different ways we can kind of start the propagating process for Adobe and the Adobe Sensei AI to essentially start looking at where it wants to mask this out automatically. If you hit the space bar, it'll go ahead and kind of start running through automatically forwards. If you did do a frame here at the very end, you can hit zero on the numeric keypad and that will actually initiate it to go backwards. However, at the very beginning, I like to go just one frame at a time so I can kind of see if we're getting a very good mask or not. And the way you do that is you just hold control and then press the right or left arrow key depending on which direction you're going. So I'm gonna be going forward here. So I'm just gonna hold control and push the right arrow key. And you can see when I do that, the mask kind of already has smoothed out quite a bit from how jagged it was. And you can see it's still relatively around the area we want it to be. So I'm gonna hold control and do the right arrow key again. Just to move forward another frame. Let's do that a couple more times. So this is looking pretty good and we'll keep an eye on this uh, as this kind of goes through. So I'm gonna hit the space bar now and kind of let this run through automatically and we can correct anything that might go wrong if it does. So let's go ahead and see this. Again, I've just hit the space bar. 
So we're picking up a little bit here around the edge, but again, this is pretty dark over here, so I'm not as concerned about that. Go ahead and zoom out here a little bit. And this process may take a little bit of time depending on the resolution of your footage and how long your clip is. So just go ahead and let this run through. All right, guys, the rotor brush has completed and it did a pretty good job. I did notice one thing right about down here. You can see it really starts picking up her lower eyelid. And what you wanna to do to fix this, if this occurs with your footage, I'm gonna come back here to around the frame where it starts to kind of go down about right there, you can see. And what we wanna do here is I just wanna go ahead and hold uh, Alt and I'm just gonna red brush down here to make sure that it knows not to pick that up. So it's kind of moved up a little bit, almost an overcorrection there. So I may just paint that in a little bit more. So it's kind of right there and you can see all these frames after that have kind of been deleted. So it's gonna to need to re kind of propagate those and reanalyze that. And that's what we want. So I'm just gonna hit spacebar again here and let that run through and that should, you know, not pick up that lower area like it did the first time. All right, guys, the analysis has finished and we can see kind of the rotor brush results we're getting here. Some of it's a little bit jumpy, but I think overall this is gonna be pretty good right here where it kind of jumps over. Because this is such a dark area over here, I'm not as concerned about that again, because we're gonna mat that out later on. But once you have this completed, and again, the kind of idea here and the reason we're using the rotor brush tool is to save us a lot of time. So hopefully we can get this to work using some feathering and some other things with this. So let's come down here and you're gonna see this little freeze button. That's just essentially just gonna lock everything in. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And this will take a little bit of time to kind of process this through, but just let that run through. I'll go ahead and speed this up to when this finishes. All right, guys, the freezing process has completed. Let's jump back over to our main composition. And now you'll see we have the eyes layer here. If I go ahead and solo that, we should see just the eyes. And so right now the edges of them are kind of rough, but when we select the footage, you'll see we have the roto brush settings here available. And we can dial in a few things to soften up the edges because we can have this fade out pretty easily. This mask, again, does not have to be perfect. Our main concern is just any other areas around the eye that are kind of bright because we want to isolate the white areas of the eye. So let's go ahead and increase the feather here. First of all, I'm going to bump this up to 30. And you can kind of see how that softened everything up around the edge. You can also play with the contrast. If I increase this all the way, you'll see we get a much harder edge. So I want to bring this down. I'm going to set this on something like maybe around 67. Next, you have the shift edge. So if you want to kind of have the mask expand outward or inward, you can adjust that as well. I bring this in a little bit, maybe like negative 30. And then finally we have reduced chatter. I'm just gonna increase that all the way up. Uh, it's, it tends to help with that a little bit. You can, again, with your shot, play around with these settings. I definitely recommend having a little bit more of a feathered edge around that typically works a lot better, especially when we do this kind of luma mat, what we're gonna do in just a second. But you can always go back and adjust the eyes, you know, with these settings to kind of dial in the best look for your shot. Now, as I mentioned, we're gonna do a luma mat. So what I'm gonna do now, actually, I'm gonna apply a few effects to the eyes. So with the eyes selected here, let's come to effect. We're gonna do color correction and we're gonna select tint because I just want this to be black and white because again, we're gonna be doing a luma mat. And also let's go ahead and apply another effect here. Let's do color correction, we'll do a lumetri color. And under basic correction here, we can dial in some contrast and bump up the highlights. So let's go ahead and increase the contrast here. So it's gonna brighten up the whites and kind of darken up these other dark areas. And then we can also increase the highlights here. So let's just bump this up a little bit more, kind of brightening those up. Now we can kind of pull back and kind of see, we're already kind of getting a nice result here with this. So I think this should work pretty nice. So now I wanna do that Luma mat. So I'm gonna select my eyes footage and let's go ahead and do Control D, Command D on a Mac to duplicate it. So now we have two different copies of this footage. And depending on your shot, you may or may not require this process, but I'm gonna try it with this one we'll to see how it works. So on this bottom copy of the eyes, I'm gonna come here to track mat. If you don't see that, just press F4 on your keyboard there and it should toggle the switches. Hopefully you can see it. And we're gonna set this to be a luma mat. So essentially that's gonna luma mat itself. So what this is gonna do, if we go ahead and turn on transparency here, you can see we're just left with the white areas of the eye. It got rid of all that dark area there. And so this is gonna be pretty effective for us uh, again, if we're just really wanting to isolate the whites of the eyes. And now just to clean this up a little bit more, I'm gonna unsolo the eyes there here. I'm gonna select both of those, hold shift, so that both of those are selected. Let's come here to layer, and let's go ahead and pre-compose those. We'll just call this the eyes. And go ahead and click OK. So now if we toggle those on and off, you should be able to see them just slightly above your footage there. But what we're gonna do here actually is we're gonna move this below our main footage layer because we only want these to be visible kind of in that fade out transition at the end. So when it's fading to black, we want the eyes to kind of linger a little bit longer. That's what's gonna give the shot a lot more of an ominous or almost devious look to it. 
like some deception or something bad's coming up with this character. So in order to achieve this, all we really need to do is fade out our base footage. So let's come over here about two seconds. We'll have this fade out over about three seconds is a pretty good time I've found. So I'm just gonna select my main footage here. I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard to show the opacity. Let's do a keyframe there on that and go all the way to the end and bring this down to zero. Now when we do that, we're obviously gonna see the eyes that are underneath that footage. And obviously this is pretty extreme to have the eyes just be there by themselves. Now depending on what kind of project you're making, you know, if it's something more serious or more kind of actual horror movie, or if it's something more kind of like a comic effect or maybe like a comic book type movie where you're wanting it to be a very stylized look, that'll kind of determine how much you want the eyes to kind of shine through on this fade out. I typically think that a little goes a long way with this effect because you almost want it to be very, very subtle where the viewer's almost like, did I kind of see what I just saw? I'm not really sure. That looks a little bit weird and kind of give them an uneasy feeling about the character. So let's just go ahead and try this immediately. I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to select the eyes and let's have them fade out at the same time. You can kind of see a slight effect of this. So I just hit T for the eyes, keyframe the opacity here and have it fade out all the way as well. And you might be wondering, well, what's, the, what's that gonna do if it fades out at the same time? Well, what it's gonna do here is right in the middle, you're gonna see the eyes can be seen through a little bit more. And so if I go ahead and toggle them on and off, you can kind of see the effect. So it's still having an effect underneath the shot. So let's go ahead and do a RAM preview of this and see what it looks like. And now you can see how the eyes definitely stick out a lot more on that fade out. And again, that's just having it fade out at the exact same time as the original shot because it's kind of halfway, it's gonna kind of bleed through. So if we want this to stand out even more, what you can do is have the fade time for the eyes start a little bit later than the initial footage fade out. So I can move this down maybe about a second. So that's really gonna leave the eyes being very bright. You can see how bright they are right there, kind of as this scrolls through. So they're definitely standing out, but at the end they all fade out together. But obviously it's drawing a lot more attention to the eyes. And if you want a really stylized look, what you can do is have your main footage fade out completely with a little bit of the eyes remaining. So you can see this, what that looks like. And that's kind of the effect you see in the movie 300. There's a scene where they have something like this happen as well. So again, you can kind of see what this looks like and the results you're getting from that. So depending on your project, how much stylization do you want? All right, guys, let's look at another example here. And this one is with, you know, the teeth kind of showing through. You might recognize this guy. Um, this is me uh, right at the end of every time, you know, I get through making a tutorial, you know, looking good. And then, yeah, that, the real feelings coming through there. Just kidding, obviously. But obviously in this case, you can see I've done the same roto effect using the Roto-Rush for the mouth. I'll go ahead and solo this here on the teeth. And since the teeth are white, obviously kind of like the eyes, you can do that same Luma matte effect after you Roto them out. But I'm having them fade out again at the same time. You know, a little bit later you can see, but they're going out at the same time as the eyes. So it kind of gives you that really, you know, kind of Cheshire cat effect where you kind of have the eyes and mouth isolated there. But in this one, obviously I kind of made my expression change a little bit at the end because I knew it would kind of be lingering. So that's the effect you can get with that but definitely try that out if you want to as well. Uh, if you wanna do the mouth, add that to the scene. And again, we could come over here, we could have the main shot fade out way earlier. So you get kind of a very isolated look. As you can see, it's a little bit more of an extreme example of this in this shot. One other thing I wanna to mention too with the eyes, or if you have something like after you have them pre-comped here, uh, and if they're still not bright enough, what you can do is just apply another Lumetri color effect to that composition and just continue to bump up the highlights because like in this case here, my eyes aren't nearly as big on screen as like the last shot with the girl there. You know, it can be harder to kind of isolate the white areas of the eyes. So you're really gonna have to bump that up sometimes. So definitely feel free to do that as well. Now I know what you guys are saying, Charles, your shot didn't look nearly as good as the first example, but guys, hear me out. If I actually put this plant up at the, like at just the right angle here, it actually can look pretty simple. All right guys, let's take a look at a few more quick examples here, a few little extra tips as well. So you can see I've got a shot here of this girl. She's definitely thinking about causing some havoc on social media pretty quickly here. And you can see how this kind of fades out. And in this case, the eyes are, are very extreme. And if it's way too much for you on the shot like that, what you can do, another thing you can do, instead of having the opacity of the eyes kind of start at 100%, have it start at something a lot lower. Like in this case, like 40%, keep it a lot more subtle. You can still see if I toggle this on and off, it's still doing you know, quite a bit there. But again, if it comes across too extreme, just dial that down and it'll just be more of a, a subtle kind of effect there on the shot. Let's take a look at another clip I've got here, which is of this nice old lady. So there's nothing creepy about this at all. Let's just go ahead and kind of, you know, take a preview of this looking quite nice. So, oh, no. Oh, no. Side note, guys, if you want to know how to make some scary movie titles like this, we actually have a tutorial for that over on Premium Beat. So I have a link for that on the blog post. 
Another trick you guys can do is once you have the eyes isolated, this is just another kind of side note here. Once you have those isolated like this using the roto brush tool, something else you can do if you wanna do like a glow eyes effect with this, you can just apply a fill effect to the eyes. And obviously this looks kind of janky right now, but you can use an effect, a glow effect I typically recommend would be something like a deep glow from plugging everything. So with the eyes selected here, this is a third party plugin, but I just wanna show you guys what this looks like. So I'll apply deep glow to this and you can see the results you get with that. So it looks pretty cool as well. And in some cases, if you're applying a glow to something, like in this case here, if the glow isn't quite bright enough, but you've kind of pushed it up to the max, what you can do is just select your base footage and just lower the opacity of that a little bit. And that will kind of make the eyes, uh, give them kind of an extra boost of glow. All right, guys, one final thing I wanted to show you. We're back to this shot of this guy. And I actually want to show you, because the technique we're using is very similar to one that was used actually at the ending of the movie Psycho when there is the kind of the fade out of the main character. I'll let you guys look that scene up on your own because of copyright stuff. And you can see a skull kind of transition on the character's face at the very end, kind of looks freaky. We're, we're doing a similar effect with that with the eyes here in this, but you can actually obviously duplicate that same effect with the skull. So let me show you what I've got here on this shot is I placed a image of a skull here. Let me go ahead and turn this on and solo it. So I've got this image of a skull. And what I've done here is track this to my face, just using the 2D tracker built into After Effects with a null. And I wanted to show you, so when this fade out occurs, we can do that same effect with the skull here. So I'll just hit T for that. So I've got opacity on that. I'm just having it fade out, but you can see when I turn on the skull, as it fades out, we can kind of see that skull shape kind of appearing you know, behind my face. And that's the same effect that was done at the ending of Psycho. You know, Obviously they did with film, so it's a little bit different technique in the sense they didn't have After Effects, but we're getting the same visual result uh, by kind of crossfading this, by having both of those kind of fade out at the same time. And you can just kind of see it underlying there on the footage. You can see near the end here, it looks pretty creepy. You can see that skull shape. So that's something you can, if you want to experiment with, definitely try that. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. And be sure to check out some of the other scary and horror themed tutorials we have on the Premium Beat channel. We've done quite a few this month. And with that, we will catch you guys on the next one.